in Lincoln County Hospital on March the 16th, 1993. <laughs> <laughs> now you understand the question. When the little bug girl had screamed the place down for hours, it was thrust at Dad with the instructions, you take her. <laughs> Nestled, into <my> shoulder. <laughs> Nestled into my shoulder and was asleep before we'd walked halfway around the ward. Um, father and daughter connection, absolutely proven. It was, uh... So, last night when I was chatting to Cara, she said, Dad, you can say whatever you like about me, but please don't embarrass me. <laughs> so, Cara, I recognise that there have been many occasions that I have unintentionally embarrassed you. Today will be different. There is absolutely nothing unintentional. <laughs> As an English graduate, uh, you may recognise a quotation where it is suggested that the all of wit is levity and brevity. You're getting none of that this afternoon. <laughs> so what can I say about Cora? Uh, not only does she have the, the genes of a mother, who is, as anyone who knows Sharon, in the absolute Amazon Prime of her life. <laughs> <laughs> Also descends from uh, a, a very fam, uh, a very strong line of uh, women from the Mullins side of the family, so it, it's no surprise at all that um, she has the, the backbone that she does. <laughs> In her early years, she had an absolute lack of understanding of why she could not do exactly what her four-year-old brother did at any point in life. She was walking at nine months. And famously, when asked one day what was in her bag um, as she left the kitchen, she told us she was leaving home and going to live next door at Tina's. I think it was when she was three. Um, so um, it's fair to say there was potentially a sign of things to come. Um, I could mention her early fascination for both reading and writing books, or the one side that was Carl's bedroom. <laughs> Clara was the original inventor of the fuel rope. <laughs> Those that have worked with Clara may recognise a reluctance to suffer fools gladly. No. <laughs> but she also has an absolute loyalty to family and close, close friends, as shown by the fact that we've got work colleagues here, we've got school friends here, we've got. As a result of uh, Cara and Harry's time in France, uh, Cara now adores cats, yeah. hates multi-story car parks, <laughs> and drives like the mountain roads like a French ski instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Famously, this is the person who accept, when accepted at Loughborough um, University for the last year when tuition fees were only 3,000 pounds a year. Um, Needless to say, when Cara phoned the university to tell them she decided to defer her place, she was going to go and uh, run a ski chalet for a year. The lady on the other end of the phone said, we haven't had many of those phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> but who was to know what that was to lead, to lead to? So, after university, um, a career, the opportunity to act as mother confessor, responsible adult, and frightened <coughs> Cara to gaggles of unwary hosts and hostesses. And of course, it's Harry. <laughs> it was Auntie Margaret that first spotted the over regular appearances of one questionably moustached <laughs> in the regular pictures from France. <laughs> Being away from home did have one significant benefit for Cara's new bike. It meant the opportunities that we previously enjoyed um, for the unplanned initiation of suitors um, were somewhat limited. Not for Harry, the indignity of being switched between Craig and myself uh, with a beer, as a door management. Uh, or the occasion when we tried to make Cara's cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce being the phrase 
for the boyfriends that used to turn up just before Christmas and disappear before you. Make dogs crampy so real So helping us boys put up the Christmas light. Uh, three stories up a ladder. Only afterwards did Cole let on. He was a uh, little more than half full of Dutch courage and terrified of heights. Uh, uh, no, so Harry managed to swerve that one. <laughs> you got it all to come. <laughs> so having now known Harry for a number of years, we shared a number of holidays, cooked many meals, discovered cars and DIY, partaken of much Pinot, and uh, rolled with laughter at those quietly deliver Harry witticisms. Mm. Yes, there's a lot of nodding going on. Uh, many of you may already have experienced this quite calm in present situations. If so, you will know that he, his absolute inability uh, to walk past the opportunity for a weekly one liner. <laughs> a couple of instances, a couple of uh, examples. Um, we're, in a, uh, we're in a little port in Greece, six of us on the boat. We're in a port in Greece. We have well partaken of the hospitality the night before. Uh, got back to bed very, very late on. It's about four o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden, the silence is broken. We crash, crash, crash. So we all... <laughs> we all leap out of bed, gazelle-like. <laughs> it was like the waking dead. <laughs> there were people stumbling around. I'm looking for my glasses. Sharon saying, Kevin, put some shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> so I wander up the companionway, race the companionway, get outside to find that we've got a squall coming through. It's blowing an absolute hooli. It's hammering it down with rain. Um, and basically banging us up against the, uh, the dock. So there's, uh, if we're not careful very quickly, we're going to do a lot of damage. So, shouting down the companionway, uh, can we get, you know, let's get the engine battery on, let's get the engine started, get it into gear, get it off of me. We are aware that we left the, there's like a canopy you can put above the boat that's acting like a bloody big sail, and it's held down with by eight or ten strings. And I'm going, I need to cut those strings, I need to get this down. So I'm shouting there, can somebody pass me an eye, can get some scissors? A hero pops up out the companionway and says, that does Murph. Don't forget, no running with scissors. In a similar vein, it's a very windy day, we ducked into a quiet day. <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> We've got 20 odd knots of wind and we've decided, no, the safest thing to do is to, um, to pull the, the dinghy up onto the deck. This is a pretty reasonable sized boat, so it's got a pretty reasonable sized dinghy. This is 8 foot by 4 foot, an inflated tube that's blowing around in 25, miles, 25 knots of wind. We've got Craig on, 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 hanging on to one end of a piece of string that's only about 8 foot long. And we're trying to pull it up over the side of the boat. I am concerned we're going to lose somebody and the dinghy over the side. So it's all being very precisely controlled. And at the point it comes over the side, we're just about to put it down on it. This voice shouts up, you boys, hold it down, I'll jump on its back and stick me thumb in its arse. Just like Steve Murphy. <laughs> 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 but in all seriousness, Harry is one of the most genuine people I've ever met. He is a great credit to his parents um, and family, and I genuinely can't think of a better person to have at the same time. <laughs> According to the Google templates I used to build this speech, <laughs> it is traditional at this juncture to offer some advice. I've got one better and I've taken some professional advice. 
Harry. The Lady Bird will go. Before I such wonderful things as. This is a wife. She looks happy, doesn't she? This is because she's on her second glass of wine. Wives like to be right. Sarah has been waiting for her husband Tom to arrive. He is half an hour late. Sarah is delighted. She knew this would happen. <laughs> so there's your, your little book about life. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> by the same token, the Lady Bird Book of the Husband. The husband finds some things very difficult. Being wrong is one of these things. When he is wrong, the husband will refer to the times he was right, even if they date back many years. <laughs> <laughs> the husband hears as much as 30% of what he says. <laughs> <laughs> many husbands are very traditional and don't believe in this before marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so two little bits of wisdom. Um, beware of the word fine. Things <laughs> are never fine. <laughs> and when you want H to do something, tell. It's only a man. Telepathy and thought transfer into bosom work. So it is my very pleasure duty to propose a toast <coughs> to my daughter and to her new husband. Uh, for Sharon and I, our friends and family are cherished gifts. My daughter, so valuable amongst them. I will always be grateful for the honour of being your father uh, and hope someday, Harry, that you get to stand in this place. <laughs> May they both be continue to be blessed and granted safety, love and happiness for all your days. Ladies and gentlemen, please be understanding. Bride and groom, Miss and Mrs. Foster.